Hello and welcome back to another Back to Basics with Computercraft from Klebco Computing, your home of all your Elvish computing needs. I'm not sure really people have Elvish computing needs, but here we have two shops. We've got Tingle's Grocery, we've got Grizz's Arrow Shop, and they've got a problem. Their storeroom is completely open to all sorts of ruffians, hooligans, layabouts. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a password program. This time we're going to focus on variables. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put a little dispenser here. Got to get a dispenser here and a turtle. And then just so that they can't click through, we're going to go ahead and put some stone underneath. So let's get him to face us. Go right. All right, there we go. So what we want to do is we want to put a little password program. So we're going to edit this guy. We're going to edit pass. And we're going to start by creating a few variables. Now a variable is pretty simple. All it is is it's a place or it's something that will store information. So we're going to make a few different variable names. We're going to make one called real password. And this variable we're going to set to Dan 200. So this is going to be our real password. Now this is just the name of a variable. You can put whatever you want inside of it. In this case, we're putting this text into this variable. And then we're going to put typed password. And we, we're not going to put anything into this yet because this is going to hold whatever the user types. And the last one we're going to call attempts. And this is how many attempts they've made to uh, go ahead and sneak their way into the storeroom back there. So if you want to set a variable with a function, it's pretty easy. You just do type the, the name of the variable, typed password, and then you can set it to a function. This one already exists. Or you can make your own function that returns some kind of information. So I'll show you how to do that. You can make function get password. And then you can, in fact, you can even pass information to this. So we're going to make a new variable called prompt local. Well, you know what? We don't need to do that. We're going to put a variable name in here. We can just make it up. We don't need the local for this one. And we're going to call it prompt. So he's getting some kind of a text. And it's getting put into this prompt variable. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to just go ahead and call the function. So here we'd say typed password equals get password. And we're going to say the prompt we want is pass. So this text is sent to this function. And it's going to be called prompt because that's what we put inside these brackets. So we can do write prompt and it's going to write out whatever we pass to it which in this case is p a s s capital with a colon and then we're going to return a, ver a value also so we're going to return read and whatever they type in in the keyboard is going to get returned by this function and you can put it into a variable just like this typed password equals your function so now what we want to do is we want to make sure that typed password is the same is the same as real password so what we're going to do is we're going to say well typed password is not equal to real password then we want to get the password again because they obviously they obviously messed something up get password pass all right so let's go ahead and see this in action and uh, there we go pass oop okay here we go we've got a problem now that's good because it sh lets us see how we can troubleshoot something so we've tried to run the pass program. It says in line 15, it's expecting a do. See, it says do expected. So let's go ahead and edit pass. We'll go down to 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15. And it says, well, type password equals real password. It says it's expecting a do. OK, this was wrong. I put then. I'm sorry, that's from a different language. But uh, we fixed it. It's OK. No harm done. And there it is. So this is our password prompt, and we can type in whatever we like, and it'll keep prompting us until we type in the correct password of Dan200. So why did we make this attempts variable? Well, we want to have the, uh, the door do different things, varying degrees of severity uh, when they get the password wrong. So we're going to keep track of how many times they've got the password incorrect. And uh, we can do different things based on it. So let's go ahead and make some functions. And uh, we're going to do different things based on, on uh, how, how bad they've done this or how, how many times they've made a mistake. So we're going to call them, uh, I don't know, bad thing one. And uh, function 
bad thing two and function bad thing three. And so we're gonna go ahead and just put some some different penalties in here for their for their uh, disappointing their disappointing password guessing skills. So here we go. The first one maybe we'll just say you stink. So a little bit of psychological warfare here. I think that you know they're they're gonna be sufficiently chastised and uh, they they won't ever want to get the wrong password again. So now we want to call this if the attempts is one. So we're just gonna say if attempts is equal to one then and then we're gonna say bad thing one and end. So we also need to make sure that attempts is going up. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. Now if you remember at the very beginning we set attempts to zero. So what we want to do is every time they make a bad attempt we just add one to it. So we're gonna say attempts equals attempts plus one. So all this is doing is Right now, attempts starts at zero. So we're going to say zero plus one. So now attempts is one. And then we're going to go through again, and it'll be one plus one, so it'll be two. And, and why don't we just go ahead and show this? We're going to say print you have made dot dot attempts dot dot attempts. So let me explain what I'm doing with those dots. Uh, if you want to add a a, uh, a variable to a string. So you want to say you have made and then the number of attempts. You got to use these dots. It's called concatenation. It's basically just you want this string to have another, you know, the number of attempts next to it. You can even put other things. You can put some string in here. So let, like set, we want them to see the password that they tried. So we can even put a typed password. So it should say on the first try, you have made, and this will put the number one here, attempts, and then it'll put the password that they typed in. So let's go ahead and try that out. And pass. So there we go. Oh, I feel horrible. I stink. And it tells us we've made one attempt. And it's keeping track of how many attempts we've made. So we're going to go ahead and type in the password here to get out. Now let's go ahead and put some other, some other penalties here. Uh, Let's see what's in here. There's nothing in the dispenser. Let's go ahead and get some zombie spawner, some zombie spawns, zombie. And uh, I don't know. We'll get rid of uh, these levers. I've got too many levers. Don't need them all. So we're gonna go ahead and put some zombie spawners in here. And all we're gonna do here is bad thing two will be pretty simple. We're just gonna do turtle. Uh, I'm sorry, redstone. Dot. Um, set output top true and then OS sleep for one second and then redstone set output top false. So bad thing too will be spawning a zombie. So let's get ready for it and let's go ahead and give it a shot. We're going to save that and exit that. Type in pass. Now I'm not sure I'm right next to the spawner but we'll see how this works. So that's Okay, I stink. I feel horrible. I've made two attempts. No, I'm right next to it. Oh, oh, um, that's not the problem. The problem is I haven't called it yet. So let's go ahead and go back in really quickly. And uh, so we have if attempts equals one, then bad thing one. Else if attempts equals two, then bad thing two. Might as well do the, the other one too. Else if attempts equals three, then bad thing three. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that again. We'll run pass and type in the wrong password. Type in, okay, all right, I, I, I don't know where he went. I, I hear him, but I don't know where he went. Let's try that again. Maybe he went back into the storeroom because there was no room for him. Uh, so here's the wrong one. Well, there's some invisible zombies here. Uh, there could be a reason for that. Yep, I figured it out. <laughs> uh, action. Okay, one last time. This should work fine. There we go. There's our monster. I was wondering when he would come out. All right. So the third bad thing we want to... Uh, I'm sorry, that was embarrassing. That was, that was horrible. So Dan 200.
so here's we want the last thing to go ahead and be you know it's the last time they get to get it wrong so we want to make sure that it's kind of final and uh, why don't we do this why don't we go ahead and give him a nuke here that sounds like a good plan and we'll why don't we dig up that thing above us dig up turtle place up and now that it's above us we can just call bad thing too so we're just gonna say bad thing too so the reason that we're doing this uh, the reason that we're uh, showing this off is because the main point is these variables you can use a variable to store some information you can use a variable to uh, to keep track of how many times something has been attempted you can use it to keep track of x y values whatever you'd like and it makes it a lot easier than just coding over and over again and trying to guess um, what information it would be so let's go ahead and uh, try our password program one last time so I feel horrible now now I'm in trouble and I'll, I'll try one last time and uh, I think the appropriate uh, <laughs> response would be to run at this point I think just trying to get away uh, would be maybe the best thing that I can do so anyway that's it for this version or this series this part oh Oh boy. Okay. Well, that's that's too bad. Well, that's it for this part of the back to basics. I hope you enjoyed learning how to use some variables. And uh until next time, happy computing. Well, he made it. He's still alive. That is amazing. <laughs>